Hey, what's up guys? It's Nick from ArchCityPLO.com and ArchCityPoker. And in today's video, we're going to be um, looking at another hand history review, but we're actually going to use PO Solver this time. Uh, Nicholas Z, I believe you were the one that uh, did have a question about PO Solver, so I wanted to get um, you know this software into a video soon. And it's a great piece of software. I'm not here to shill it. I, I don't get paid or anything to do this. I just I think it's a really great piece of a software if you're studying No Limit. So uh, the hand history review is going to cover a uh, a hand that I played very recently. It was actually in the last video that was um, put up on the channel before this, the live stream, so to speak. I played a hand out of position, 8-7 uh, suited, raised, player in position calls, button squeezes, folds to me, I call, and then the player in between the button and myself, he calls as well. Um, I said during the video I thought that it was a little bit too loose of a play from out of position. Uh, you can see my range here. This is my calling range versus the button squeeze. The 0.85 is going to be the frequency with which I show up with these combos. So the other 15% of the time I'm actually probably 4-betting these. Uh, I think in the live low stakes games that's not going to be the case. I think a lot of players are going to be just way too narrow uh, with their three betting ranges way too value heavy to where four bet bluffing is almost really lighting money on fire you want to have maybe like a certain kind of combo like maybe just four specific hands uh, could be ace 10 suited possibly or um, something like that but the point is in the online setting they're gonna be a little bit looser let's say you're in a live low stake setting and you do face a looser opponent then you're gonna have to get a little stickier you're gonna have to four bet a little more um, you could subscribe to like a four bet only or fold strategy, but I think you're missing out on some, um, you know, some EV if you don't have some kind of calling range. So generally these pairs almost every time theoretically are going to fit in as calls these, uh, I think your Queens are generally almost always four bet jacks are four bet pretty often, but the middling pairs are very often called, uh, some of the bigger aces are called as well for balance. I think in theory, uh, solver. I, I think it often likes king queen suited to 4-bet, but I don't think it's a terrible call. But I think these strong suited aces, uh, maybe some like ace-queen off, some of these pairs. And then, you know, for the sake of this video, I threw in 8-7 suited and 6-5 suited. Uh, simply because in that live stream, I said that I felt like there was going to be a little bit better pot odds having that player in between us uh, to get involved with 8-7 suited and 6-5 suited. It would give me a little bit of board coverage. The 8s and the 7s take care of that. In theory, these combos really shouldn't be in my range that often, like I said. But if they are, I think they may fit in as calls sometimes. It really depends on how deep you are. Uh, you need to have a little bit more room for creativity, uh, for flexibility with the suited connectors. The pairs have a little more showdown value. That's why they're thrown uh, into your calling range in theory. But, you know, for the sake of this video, like I said, this is, um, you know, how we're going to... It's essentially like how to study is what the video really should be titled. And I think that's what I'll end up actually titling it. Like hand history review, how to study poker type of deal. But, you know, I, I would, let's say you do get a piece of software like this. Um, you know, I put in this range. Now, this is just the basic package. I don't have preflop ranges uh, saved in or anything like that. I also, you guys have seen use Poker Snowy. I can just use... Um, Snowy's like algorithm or solver, so to speak, and, and it's preflop ranges. It's pretty close to what I think Pio would spit out. So, um, you know, this is kind of roughly what I think my range would have been in that spot. If we want to look at the player in position, I, I don't know anything about him. I told you guys in that stream, I haven't really played No Limit online in a, in a while. I've only played like a little heads up, and I played mainly just PLO. So I gave him roughly a about what Poker Snowy would suggest for like a squeeze in that spot. And then I added maybe a few combos that maybe uh, an unknown might have. Like maybe he every now and then has some pseudo connectors. These percentages might even be a little bit too high. Um, they might not have them at all. But maybe some of those baby suited aces. I think these are combos that players these days almost universally know that are like decent three bets essentially. Especially the ace, uh, baby suited aces with those blockers there. But... You know, I, I think it generally will look like this, though. You'll have your Broadway pairs and then your big aces. Um, I, I think it's reasonable enough. I, I think the main takeaway from the beginning part of this video is that, 
you're never going to be able to perfectly range an opponent, but if you can get it close, then you're going to have a pretty good idea of what you're supposed to do. So, uh, you know, like I said, I did call flop comes 10, seven, four rainbow. And I did a backdoor flush draw. I'll get into uh, a little bit better of a visual representation in a minute for starting pot and effective stacks, uh, just to make it a little easier have like some solid round numbers and not the decimals from two cent, five cent. I just uh, essentially made it like a two five game if you were playing like live two five or something like that. So starting pot 265, effective stack 650 to start. Down here uh, with the inputs as far as like bet and raise sizes. It's, uh, you know, like I said, it's a little speculative for the player in position. I just gave him roughly around half pot what he actually did bet. I gave myself a leading range just to see if Solver thinks I should be leading. I, I said in the video I didn't think I should be just because I don't have a range advantage, but definitely gave myself uh, a raise size. To keep it simple, gave myself just full pot because that ends up being like a shove. You know, there could be scenarios where you have two different raise sizes. In theory, you guys can see here on Future Streets, Turn and River, the reason I split it between a half pot and full pot uh, sizing. Let's say the player in position checks back. On the turn, I don't think he's going to pot it a whole lot. I think he might stab for a more reasonable sizing in that spot, 50%. But let's say he does, in fact, see bet for a round half pot. Then his turn bet's often going to be larger and more polarizing, so that's why I have those two sizings in there. And I'll always typically have two sizings just to see what Solver likes on these future streets. Uh, if you guys are checking flop strategies... Make sure you do input everything through the river because the tree will be incomplete if you don't. And like I said, it's not going to be perfect. I gave two sizings. You know, maybe the two sizings should be two thirds in pot. Maybe it should be half pot and three fourths pot. I, I don't really think it matters that much as far as how you guys study and review in these spots. When you study, keep it simple. Um, narrow your focus to like one specific type of spot. So right now we're studying out of position on the flop versus a three better. And yes, in that actual hand, you know, there were three of us in that hand. I can't look at multi-way uh, action in PO Solver. You can do that in Bunker Solver. I have used that for mainly PLO, but you can do that with no limit. That's uh, a little bit more complicated and expensive as far as uh, that solver is concerned. But PO is amazing for heads up. Uh, and let's just assume that you do end up in this spot again, but you are heads up and that's the situation that's going to occur the most frequently, so I think it makes sense to study this. Uh, and even multi-way in this spot, maybe my strategy doesn't change a whole lot. It is going to change a little bit. Simply having that third player is usually a bigger deal. But let's just assume next time we're in a heads-up spot. Um, you know, go ahead, put it everything through the river, like I said. You build the tree. You hit go. Run it down to at least 0.5% uh, or... Uh, smaller, and then you'll get a pretty accurate representation. Seems like this has turned into like a uh, PO Solvers tutorial, but I don't want to go too much more into that. I want to get into the actual hand since it is a hand history review. So on the flop, this is uh, me out of position on 10-7-4. Here's my combo down here, 8-7 of spades. And you can see that Solver doesn't want me to do any leading. Uh, the point six is not going to, that's, it doesn't mean anything. It just, we're going to assume 100% here. Uh, that's going to make a lot of sense simply because if you look here in equity, out of position, I do not have the range advantage. I'm actually at a pretty decent disadvantage in that spot. It makes sense. He is the three better. Um, I am capped with my calling range because a lot of my stronger combos would have four bet. You see those combos missing up here. So he does have a little bit of a range advantage. So it makes sense that I'm not supposed to really be doing any leading. So 100% check. And I think this is reasonable as far as uh, how often players in position will see bet here. Maybe some see bet a little bit more, maybe some a little bit less. I, I think this is quite reasonable about three-fourths of the time. And like I said, this size is pretty much about what he used uh, in-game. So he goes ahead and bets. So this is the spot where I was, I didn't, I wasn't really debating, but I was explaining why I thought 8-7 suited could fit in as a check raise. I felt like Multi-way especially, I felt like middle pairs, uh, they don't have as much showdown value. They work actually a little bit better semi-bluffs. So maybe if PO Solver had the ability to throw that third player into this pot, I think the frequency with which I raise with 8-7 suited would actually be a lot higher. And you can see it down there in the bottom right. 
uh, a few of the combos, you know, about, what is that, 15% of the time, 16% uh, of the time, they it still wants me to do some check raising heads up. Not a lot. If I did have 6-5 suited in my, in my range, that seems to be uh, my main bluff. That is an open-ender. It's obviously lacking showdown value. Pushing a little bit more equity, I think, when we get it in than 8-7 suited. But uh, pocket queens, I do have the one over pair that I would have sometimes there. And that looks like that is going to be one of my peer raises. If I didn't have that, might not be doing a whole lot of raising at all. It might be leaning more towards call and then a lot of folding. But you can see that 8-7 suited does fit in in this kind of speculative uh, review. So I do go ahead and shove. And the cool part about PO Solver is you get to uh, essentially change the strategy. Uh, it's called node locking. I'll show you in a second here. But I wanted to see what he's supposed to call it off with. And you can see that Ace-King suited and Ace-Queen suited are actually doing a lot of calling. I think a lot of opponents would C-bet and actually fold this combo thinking that it's just over cards. They don't have enough equity when in fact they really do and you need to be defending enough in a spot like that. I don't think any pairs are going to be folding, so I agree that 7-6 and 6-5 are going to be calls. But it would be interesting to see that if we did feel like an opponent was going to be a little more straightforward, which they often tend to be in lower stakes games, what will happen if we change a strategy to where he folds these combos? How much more often am I in fact raising? Is it more often at all? There's going to be a quick little transition in the video here because what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'll show you how to do it, but we're going to go up to set strategy and lock node. So call, you can see ace, king, and ace, queen. Let's just say we'll go the most extreme. Say he is not calling those at all after betting. We'll go to fold. Have him folding ace, king, ace, queen 100% of the time. So what you do is you lock all hands, set the strategy and close, and then what you got to do is go back out here, rerun it. I actually think it won't take that much time. So you just got to go. You don't build the tree again. And what it's going to do is it's going to go back through and rerun the sim uh, for essentially as if he is going to fold that ace king and that ace queen in that spot. And yeah, you can see it's already, so it changed there to 0.58. Once we get it down to 0.5 or less, I'm going to go ahead and stop it. And then we're going to see how much my strategy changed. So 0.45, that's good enough. Stop, go back to browser. So go back to strategy. Just to recap, he does bet. Make sure I got that right. So yeah, I check, he bets. So it didn't change a whole lot. We're actually, all it did was really, in fact, have me... Uh, you could simplify the strategy and probably almost just always shove 6-5 suited now. Looks like 8-7 suited actually went down in frequency a little bit. Uh, queens are about the same. And that's, again, simply due to him probably overfolding a little bit. Uh, if we actually go back... Yeah, it didn't really change a whole lot, actually. So it didn't change as much. Now, if you had a really tight opponent that was going to fold... Maybe he folds these pairs also. That could change it quite a bit. But the simple fact that you can go into PO, use the uh, the the uh, node locking um, function, essentially, within this software, you can come up with some exploitative strategies, and you can come up with really exploitative stuff based on what Solver spits out for the optimal exploitative strategy, if you will. So I thought it was a pretty interesting spot. Um, I was curious if I was, in fact, supposed to be check-raising 8-7 suited. Seems like a little bit. If, uh, and I think that goes up even more, like I said, if there's another player in the pot, which there was. But it seems like if I do have that open-ender, then I'm putting that in a little more often. I, I think everything else makes sense. It has a little more showdown value. Um, you can see middle set there is actually not getting raised at all. It's simply because it really doesn't need protection. It's so strong that we would like to keep him in the pot, let him barrel off, essentially. Uh, but queens need a little more protection. We can go ahead and shove those. We keep jacks in our range for some balance. Uh, so we don't just only have under pairs when we check call. Top set obviously is even stronger than middle set, needs zero protection pretty much. Um, but, you know, pretty interesting hand review. Um, I think a nice way to show you guys once again real quick how uh, PO Solver works, how this kind of software can uh, really help you with your game, really help you understand what your opponent's range looks like. If you actually real quick, if we want to see Another quick uh, little piece of functionality. 
How often does this opponent have like certain types of combos? Open Range Explorer here. Yeah, and you can see he has, um, essentially it's like 50-50 as far as like over pairs plus, he has about 45% of the time. You can see those uh, second and third pair hands about 4% of the time. Otherwise, he's got pretty much nothing, 50% uh, or more of the time there. So it is kind of interesting to see like what his actual range looks like. Um, this can actually give you a much, uh, I guess, a more thorough representation of who does have the range advantage, who has the polarity advantage. You know, if for example, uh, polarity advantage. So who does have more over pairs plus? It's clearly going to be him. But if it's ever close in a spot when you're reviewing, you can use this to find out. We can see here he's got what I say, 45% of the time he's got sets plus. Let's go ahead now and look at my range. So we go to um, this once again, once we get the action on me. Yeah, and you can clearly see I only have uh, over pairs plus about 28% of the time compared to his 45% of the time. So clear polarity advantage for him, meaning more nutty combos. And that's, of course, simply why he also has the range advantage. When you have more of the nuts in your range, then you usually do have the range advantage. So pretty interesting uh, hand history review, I guess. If you guys have any questions or comments, go ahead and let me know. Uh, otherwise, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, check out the new PLO site, hit the link there, uh, and I'll see you guys in the next video.